Hi everyone, uh, my name is Aurora. Uh, very glad to be here today uh, to tell you a little bit about the European Health Data Space. I think as most of you who were here yesterday, the discussions in the afternoon resonated with us greatly, seeing what is happening in different regions across the globe. And uh, today it, it is my pleasure to bring the discussion back to the EU and uh, tell you all a little bit about the, the European Health data space. A little bit uh, about me. Uh, I'm a doctor by profession, uh, so I have not practiced medicine in, in quite a few years. Uh, I am currently working as a second national expert for the European Commission and I originally come from Estonia, uh, from the Ministry of Health or the Ministry of Social Affairs, since we are such a small country, uh, we combine three ministries in one. So it's the Ministry of Health, the Social Affairs and the Labour Market in one. So to those who are equally bad as me in geography, a little reminder where Estonia is. Uh, but hopefully, as you are all here, here today and know about the, our little but highly digitalized uh, nation, so just a few examples. In Estonia, we adopted e-prescription in 2010, and we have not looked back since then. And all the health documents are digitalized and interoperable in different levels of, of, the, of the country. So uh, from the ministry to the commission to you today to talk about the so one of the most anticipated uh, proposals uh, from the Commission, uh, it's the proposal for regulation on the European uh, health data space. So in uh, February 2020, European Commission came out with the strategy for data and announced the Commission's plans for European data, data spaces, including EHDS. Uh, so, of course, uh, logically, uh, we decided to go with the easiest one, the health one, uh, or not the easiest one, but, uh, but, the, but the most uh, hopefully the most beneficial. And uh, the COVID pandemic had clearly demonstrated that uh, the importance the digital services have in the health domain and triggered the important uh, acceleration and the uptake of the digital tools, uh, the European COVID certificate being one of them a uh, little bit of discussions that we had on this yesterday as well. And uh, taking that momentum and uh, taking all that change and uh, coming up with the proposal for the European health data space. So uh, the EHDS, uh, so those who love acronyms as much as I do, uh, is the heart of the European Health Union that uh, uh, that is an uh, initiative to improve the resilience of European health systems. And uh, the EHDS uh, grants uh, easier access for crucial health data to take the right decision at the right time. So in case of future pandemics, but also different health crises, uh, war, etc. And uh, the EHDS will enable more efficient process in different initiatives. So for example, the EU cancer plan, uh, HERA activities and the pharmaceutical strategy for Europe. But uh, the regulation just uh, did not come to be. A lot of preparation went into that. So different studies, uh, one on GDPR in health, uh, different regula regulatory gaps, uh, infrastructures and how to monitor EHR systems. So all of these are available. So if uh, any of those interest you, reach out and we can do the connection. And uh, there was a big st uh, study uh, supporting the impact assessment. And of course, uh, in 2021, a public consultation was held uh, with uh, almost 400 contributions from very different uh, groups of people. So it was citizens, it was uh, the industry, it was non-EU citizens, trade unions, and so on and so on. Uh, All together from the 23 different member states uh, and eight non-EU countries. Uh, because the, regular, the proposal process started almost as a blank page, uh, taking into, into consideration all the feedback and, uh, and the con contributions from the workshops and uh, other, other initiatives, uh, we, formed, uh, we formed the proposal. 
So what are the main challenges uh, in harnessing the power of health data? So first of all, we must look at it uh, from a citizens uh, perspective from the very first level. So individuals have uh, difficulty accessing and controlling their health data. I think the, the discussions we had yesterday supported that argument. At the same time, there uh, are healthcare professionals who have difficulty accessing uh, health data of those patients. So that means that uh, unnecessary laboratory work, unnecessary medical imaging gets done. And as a doctor, I am definitely in favor for getting a second opinion when it's needed. But uh, I think everyone can agree that uh, in some cases, multiple MRIs for the same problem might not be, not be needed. Uh, for the policymakers and the regulators, uh, there is uh, barriers of accessing the data and also the providers of digital health services uh, and uh, products face uh, different barriers. And therefore, there is limited research and innovation uh, taking, places, taking place on the, on the health data that we are already collecting. And the proposal. So it sets out the rules, common standards, infrastructures and governance framework for the use of electronic health data uh, for healthcare, research, innovation and policymaking. So, as I said, uh, having the patient or, or the European people really at the center, uh, it, it aims to empower individuals to access and control their personal health data. So it, it is not just about the access, but it's also about the, the person's right to see who has access to their data, who has, uh, the, person have the persons have the right to to close uh, certain parts of their health data if they find it necessary. Uh, secondly, to ensure a consistent framework for the use of individuals' health data for research, uh, innovation, policy making, and regulatory purposes. And uh, thirdly, uh, to unleash the data economy by fostering a genuine single market for digital health services and products, so the EHR, electronic health record systems. So the EHDS is a 100-page document. I think this is the closest we have ever gone to putting it on a one page. Uh, so if uh, <laughs> you laugh, but we try, the first version was not that, um, not that small. Uh, so when I, uh, half a year ago, when I started at the commission and I was trying to explain to my grandma uh, what I am doing, uh, because she has very difficult uh, understanding why as a doctor I am now working in an office. Uh, so I, I tried to use this uh, slide as a template. It helped a little bit that Estonia is highly digitalized, uh, but uh, overall uh, the objective is uh, the effective use of uh, health data. And we do it by, and now I'm really generalizing, uh, by two different domains. So first of all, uh, the primary use of health data. So the use of health data in the context of continuity of care or, or any care setting. And then secondly, the secondary use uh, or the reuse of health data. So it, that is in research, in policy making, uh, in innovation. And for that, we uh, have two different structures. So first of all, uh, my health at EU, uh, that uh, uh, my dear colleague Clara will tell you a little bit more about. And uh, secondly, uh, health data at EU, that will be the body for, for the secondary use of uh, health data in EU. So for the, pri for the primary uh, use, uh, the aims are to uh, empower individuals to control their data. So as I said, uh, who, seeing who has accessed my data, who making sure that I can give, uh, give permissions, I, I can look at my child's data, I can, if my grandma gives me access, that I can look at her data, help her in the doctor's appointments and so on. Uh, secondly, the standardization and mandatory certification of electronic health record systems. Uh, we proposed a voluntary labeling of wellness apps, so uh, the different wellness apps that are out there, uh, that uh, there would be a label that would uh, ensure that this is a app that can be trusted and you can trust it with your health data. And uh, the European Electronic Health Record Exchange Format. 
And by that, we want to come to a single market for health data, uh, taking into consideration different data protection principles. Uh, uh, in the Europe, of course, the free movement of people, uh, because some of the services are uh, aimed at the very Cross border for cross border use cases and digital goods and services. The secondary use of health data will happen, will become possible uh, between health data access bodies. Uh, the uh, the proposal for regulation uh, indicates the purposes and, uh, for use and also the forbidden uses of health data. So it would uh, ensure the citizens who trust us with their, with their health data that uh, this will not be used against them. Uh, and the process with the data permits, uh, secure processing environments and of course uh, no identification. I will tell you a little bit more about the uh, about the uh, data permit process a little bit later. And through that, we really want to facilitate research and innovation, and of course, better policy making. And uh, different means we have uh, listed down there. Oh, yeah, I didn't work on the screen. Sorry. So. Uh, legal and governance framework, quality of data, infrastructures, and of course, uh, capacity building and digitalization. So, uh, but, it, but it's not just uh, a regulation that we came up with, uh, that is uh, like something in the far, far future. Uh, as some of, the, uh, some of the elements are already implemented today, uh, and for uh, one of those being My Health at EU, uh, that is uh, facilitating cross-border services. So there are currently two different uh, services. Uh, it's the patient summary and the prescription, so cross-border e-prescription. And we currently have 11 member states uh, that are live. And uh, two more are joining us in October, so in a in, in few days. <laughs> and uh, the, the number of uh, member states who are connected is rapidly growing. And there are plans for most member states and EA countries to join My Health at EU uh, until 2025. Also, a great uh, uh, opportunity to see if your country is live, and uh, if not, uh, then maybe push them towards it. As, uh, as I moved from Estonia, from Tallinn to Brussels, I was very saddened by the fact that I could not take my health data with me. Uh, that the prescriptions uh, and, uh, and the medical images that I had uh, for my chronic disease, I would have to retake all, all those tests and all those, uh, uh, all those consultations again, because uh, the health data just could not be moved. Uh, so, uh, the roadmap towards the EHDS. Uh, so, uh, first pillar is uh, having new members, uh, new member states joining the My Health uh, at uh, EU framework. Uh, secondly, we have two, two pilots. Uh, we have a path ID that is uh, focusing on patient access uh, that uh, started in uh, January 2023. And uh, then there's the potential, a large scale pilot uh, that uh, investigates how we can use the EU digital identity wallet uh, and uh, e-prescription being one of the use cases. And if you look at towards the future, there are other services uh, that we would like to uh, introduce on a, on a cross-border level. So one of them being lab results uh, with and medical images and the work is already ongoing and uh, in a little bit more distant future, hospital discharge reports as well. And of course, this uh, all goes together with the EHDS regulation. Uh, so the My Health at EU, uh, so the infrastructure for the different, uh, for the different uh, cross-border services would become uh, mandatory uh, after the tr tr transitional periods. Uh, but uh, when would that exactly be is, uh, is really pending uh, decision by the co-legislators. Uh, just really quickly, how the My Health at EU is set up. Uh, so it is set up uh, uh, as the Commission are providing uh, central services and uh, then each member state sets up their national contact point for e-health. 
and the data exchange uh, happens uh, between them, but I wouldn't want to spoil Clara's presentation, so I will move on from here. Uh, very similar uh, will be the process B for the health data at the EU, so that is the secondary use body. Uh, uh, commission will once again uh, provide uh, core services uh, for for the uh, for the structure, and uh, then each member state sets up uh, date, uh, health data access bodies, who will be responsible for the exchange of the data, and this, and the the processing of the data will happen in secure processing environments. So to ensure that the security is, uh, uh, is at the highest level and uh, nothing uh, happens that should not be, should not be happening. Uh, but a little bit about the, the process uh, for, uh, for the data access uh, process uh, for the secondary use. So it all starts with, uh, with a research researcher asking a question. Uh, what health data exists uh, to support my research? Because there is quite, quite a lot of data that we are always not aware of. Uh, and uh, ha have they found the, the necessary data? They submit a permit uh, for application. So uh, asking if they can use that data for the research project. Uh, then happens uh, some of the bureaucratic processes happen there. Uh, but the uh, outcome uh, would hopefully be to issue a permit and make da data ready to use, uh, ensuring data quali quality and privacy. Uh, then uh, the researcher will be given access to the secure processing environment where the data processing happens. Uh, researcher does their thing. And uh, with, the, with the outputs, uh, pub publish research, ensure privacy and uh, verifiability. One of the things uh, that uh, we hope will, uh, will interest the patients is that when, during that research process, uh, there are claims that there is a significant risk for that uh, patient or that patient type uh, is uh, prone to some life-threatening condition, then it, it, it would be up to, up to the system to notify that patient that uh, they are in a, in a high-risk group for, I don't know, developing cancer, getting uh, cardiovascular disease or, or, or something else. So it, it, for the patient, it's not just uh, something hypothetic, hypothetical that happens, uh, but it's, uh, it's really for them to also see the benefit and it's not uh, just... Um, pharma companies uh, uh, taking, uh, taking their data and not, not giving anything back. And for the health data at the EU, uh, there is also a pilot project ongoing. So uh, a project to build and operate the first version of the health data at the EU. It's uh, launched in October 2022. So we are currently almost um, celebrating uh, the first anniversary or the first birthday of the of the health data at the EU project, and the aim is to create and test a bit better version of uh, European health data space infrastructure for for secondary use. Uh, test out some uh, some use cases uh, with trusted uh, trusted uh, partners who are already established in, 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 the, in the secondary use and also developed the core services that, uh, that we at the Commission uh, will be providing. Did you want to take a picture? Okay. And uh, so uh, five cross-border use cases proposing complementary research question uh, that will hopefully show the value of uh, health data at the EU and drive the work development as part of the project. Uh, so first of all, uh, the uh, antimicrobial resistance uh, surveillance. Uh, secondly, identifying the risk of coagulation disorders in patients with uh, COVID-19. Uh, tests uh, use hospitalization and uh, vaccination adherence in vulnerable subpopulations. Uh, Fourthly, a uh, pro project to participate care pathways in cardiometabolic diseases using AI. 
And uh, lastly, identifying uh, genomic signatures, uh, signature characteristics of different types of colorectal cancers. And in, in October, we have a workshop coming up. Uh, so just to introduce the, the first year outcomes of, of, the, of the My Health, uh, Health Data at EU Infrastructure. So if someone is interested, let me know. So uh, why are we doing all this? Uh, as I have stated, uh, for, for the primary use, uh, people are at the center. Uh, so that they would really have a better control over the, their health data and they could easily share it uh, with health professionals where, wherever they are. So it's, uh, it's not just within their country, but also, also anywhere in the EU. Uh, secondly, for the uh, health professionals, really to have the access to all relevant health data and uh, introducing the translation functions as part of the My Health and EU services. And on a larger scale, to have EU-wide standards for uh, electronic health record systems, so just to make it easier for market access in other member states and increase the competition. And on the secondary uh, use so really to assist policymakers and uh, regulators in accessing relevant health data, uh, to facilitate access uh, to health data for innovation in industry, and really to make, the, uh, make available health data for researchers. So we could uh, foster the greater opportunities for research and innovation. And on, on the individual level, uh, what we want to give the people of Europe is uh, strengthened security. So the primary use uh, already builds up on EU cybersecurity legislation. Uh, there will, uh, the security and the interoperability criteria for electronic health record systems plus uh, a CA marking. Uh, regular uh, security audits for the My Health at the EU, so the primary cross-border uh, infrastructure. Uh, strong authentication for both patients and the health professionals, and only persons uh, entitled to access the health data would be uh, allowed or would get to access the individual's health data. And uh, on the individual level, uh, why people would, uh, would benefit from, from the secondary use. So really uh, to make sure that the data, processed is, is data processing is done in uh, pro uh, secure processing environments, so compliant with high standards of privacy and cybersecurity, uh, that no personal data can be downloaded, uh, that the users would not be identifiable, and uh, of course, uh, once again, audits uh, of participants of uh, in my health at EU. Uh, of course, uh, it comes with uh, immense uh, growth potential. Uh, so for the both uh, for, for the both primary and 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 the secondary, so it is expected to. Uh, to have 5.5 uh, billion over the next 10 years uh, for EU from better access and exchange of health data in, in healthcare, and uh, 5.4 billion over 10 years uh, for, for research and innovation and better policy making. Uh, all sounds real good, uh, but where are we currently? So the Commission came up with a proposal for uh, EHDS regulation on May 3rd last year. Uh, in Council, uh, we, uh, we started the examination under uh, France, France's presidency and it has been uh, ongoing work uh, till, till now, uh, where, the, where Spain is, uh, is uh, leading the discussions. And uh, we hope to, to finalize it in, in the next uh, upcoming months. And in the Parliament, of course, we have shared the competency with ENVI and LIBE, LIBE committees. Oh no. Okay. So, 
Thank you very much. Um, I think we will have a question session, but let's, I think we can take one or two questions uh, now. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I think you can, you can uh, easily say to your grandmother that uh, what you do is you cure anxiety with presentation because this was, this was fantastic and, and, and great. I, w I, w I would have, uh, I actually have two, but I'll keep, them, keep, them, keep the second one uh, for later. Uh, there's standardization and mandatory uh, certification for electronic health record uh, systems and voluntary for, uh, for the wellness apps. MDR would be the determined, uh, or the way to determine which is which, would be the medical device regulation? Uh, that's a, that's a very good question since, uh, as I said, we came up with a proposal in, in 2022 and it has been now discussed during four different presidencies, uh, so the text has changed quite a bit. It is, uh, it, it is n not as, as it was, uh, but uh, I don't think I can give out that too, too much information on that, okay. but it's, it, it is uh, tailored by the member states liking very much. So uh, I guess maybe some of the other speakers could help you uh, because I know that a lot of discussion is going on there. Uh, so maybe Professor Schizas or uh, Petra can say a few things about that. So, second question. Uh, 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 the secondary use case is, uh, to speak, the secondary use case is to, uh, to make use of the data by, by the primary from the donor patients to do research and so on. And you said, I think, that the data is anonymized. What would happen if you did discover something in some of the research data that, that meant it would be nice to get back in touch with the donor patient to let them know they were likely to have some kind of illness. Is it possible to trace back through the research data back? Uh, it would not be uh, possible for researchers to trace back. Uh, so that's why we are setting up the health data access bodies in member states. And uh, the d data will be, will be comp comp filed by them, and then uh, the uh, appropriate data would be uh, handled in the uh, secure processing environments. Uh, so yes, it would be. But not as a researcher, so it would be. Oh, okay. okay, thank you very much <coughs> for uh, your excellent presentation.